I have one I could start with if you like. Sure. So I was reading uh, reading Jordan, Jordan Peterson's book. Yeah, the new the one. The new one. Yeah. <clears throat> Which I don't recommend. Why? Um, Why? It's too hard to read for people. <laughs> like, I'm not. I'm well, not the, f- the first one was you had to. Yeah. Read slowly. Right, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm not saying that like. It's a bad book. I'm not saying it's a bad book. Number one, I'm not saying that I'm smart enough to read it. Yeah. <laughs> number two, right. not say- saying either of those things. I'm saying it takes a lot of effort yeah. to focus on it. So if, unless you're very interested in the content, yeah. you're gonna want to right when you're sl- when you're reading it. Yeah. So, um, anyways, I'm reading it, and I got two, I got two things I could I can go. I'll see how long it takes me <laughs> to go through it. So. Yeah. Uh, I was reading rule number two. So the rule, book is called 12 Rules for Life. That was his first book. Second book is called 12 More Rules yeah. for Life. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm on rule number two of the 12 More Rules. Okay. And at the start of every chapter, he has a picture. Yeah. Kind of as a representation of the chapter, more or less. That Like the first book. Yeah, like the yeah. first book. So I'm familiar with that. So you get to the, the rule... And it'll say rule one and there's a picture next to it. And the picture is supposed to like have some symbolism yeah. that is corresponds to the contents of the chapter or yeah. of the rule. So anyway, so I was reading this one uh, the other night. And it's amazing. He's talking about artists and how people create like pictures like this and whatever. And he was trying to explain the picture that he had at the start of the chapter. And it was basically at the bottom of the picture... It's a, there's a sphere with wings. Then there's a dragon around the top of the sphere. Then there's a two-headed human figure uh, with a male head and a female head. And then behind it, there's all this symbolism of uh, of the like Greek gods or mythology type stuff. So there's like the god of Mercury and a bunch of other things. And I don't have it all memorized, but you get the idea. Yeah. And it's in an egg shape, okay. the picture. Yeah. And so he's trying to explain the symbolism of the picture and without going into all the details of it, because he goes through like walks through each of the symbols and what it means. And then he was relating it back to life and stuff. And it's amazing that I'm reading his analysis of the picture. And it's amazing that the person that drew that or the person that came up with that picture probably couldn't explain that. Like they probably, they probably couldn't explain like how deep the meaning is behind the symbols that they're coming up with. So, for example, at the bottom, there's a sphere with the wings, and it symbolize, it's a symbol for, uh, it was, I, could be, I could be wrong, but it's a symbol for, uh, like, potential and information. That's what a symbol is. So, if you can get to this thing, then you'll have some understanding of some kind of information that is held within it sort of thing. Yeah. And until you catch it, it's just potential. You don't know what it is until you catch okay. it. And it looks like I don't know if you've ever seen Harry Potter, but they, no, it, no, okay. Well, in the in Harry Potter, they chase this thing in the sport game they play called the Golden Snitch, and it looks exactly like that. It's a sphere with wings, and it flies around, and the ki- people that are playing the game, tra- two of them are trying to catch this thing. Anyways, so it comes from like thousands and thousands of years ago, like before we had language. They came up with these pictures. Yeah. So you, they, the symbolism that he's reading into the picture, we understood the symbols. And we understood the picture before we were able to explain the picture. Yeah, yeah. You know? And so he's talking about how when we watch hero stories and movies, fictional stories and read stuff, people relate to it so much because our lives, our lives are like stories. We're more like stories. We think of our lives like a story. Okay. You know? And so anyways, I'm thinking, I'm looking at this picture and it's just amazing listening to him explain the depths like of all of the pieces of this picture and what all these things mean guys so smart and and it's like there's no way even the artist knew that that's what all that stuff meant you know where did the artist get the information from well it could have been anything it could have been just like things so okay so the person that actually drew the pictures for the book he had her on the podcast and she couldn't explain the picture oh so he said hey can you draw this i don't know if that's exactly how it went but i think he said he said okay here's the rules for the book and he did it like a contest, like draw oh. a picture for each rule kind of thing. And then he picked the person who ended up being the drawings in the book. But he had her on his podcast and she couldn't do the pictures just like I listened to it. She couldn't do the pictures justice wow. explaining the pictures. She did fine. Yeah. She did fine like explaining the symbolism. But he just takes it like yeah, yeah. He's, he's, 40 layers and he's nuts. 30 million years yeah. deeper of yeah. like the symbolism behind it. And yeah. it's just 
it's crazy how you take for granted or you don't know why you look at something and you don't know why you're interested in it. Yeah. Like he was talking about how people don't know why they're interested in the things they're interested in. Mm -hmm. So it's like, for example, kid uh, that doesn't like school versus a kid that does like school. Why does the one like school and the one not when they're both 10? Yeah. It's like, you can't explain that. Like what is is it about? Right. And it's just amazing to see like how complicated we are and like how deep our, our psychology goes and the biology behind everything and the evolution behind everything coming up to a, like a picture that's like that. And we can understand it when we look at it or when we watch a hero story or listen to or uh, read a book or watch a movie. We th- or think like when we're watching, oh yeah, this all makes perfect sense. Like this is good. Yeah, but to come like, up with that idea is, is a whole other thing. Yeah, and it's like the, up, the guy... If it's a like a male hero story, the guy slays the dragon, gets the girl, and that's the way hero stories go. And we just like yeah. take for granted, like that's how it goes. Yeah. And it's just amazing, yeah. like how much, how deep the stuff is seeded from when people couldn't speak. They were still yeah. making these pictures yeah. and creating these drawings and yeah. sketches and whatever to tell, like, or to pass on wisdom or whatever before science was a thing. Yeah. Like this, the one picture I think he was talking about, I could be getting some of the details wrong, but I think it was from like 4,000 years ago. And that's how people's understanding wasn't governed by science, how it is today. It was yeah. governed by governed by like stories and yeah. myth and yeah, stories, these other and things, right? The, the moon's there. What's it there for? Yeah, exactly. It must be a sign. Yeah, from the gods. And that's how they passed along wisdom, like you yeah. know, earth, wind, fire, water, yeah, wood. Those were like yeah. five yeah. elements, yeah, from uh, like in Chinese mythology or whatever. So, anyways, it was it's just so fascinating reading it. So all that was to say he, he talks about you've said this before because this kind of relates to parenting stuff and i'm sure you've heard him talk about this when kids are playing sports in particular parents will always say to them it's not whether you win or lose it's yep. how you play the game yep and it's so so interesting because he says he always says that line and then says people don't know why they say that yeah he, he's got a real deeper yeah, meaning on it's that. not it's not whether you win or lose it's how it's how you play the game parents will say that to their kids or some version of that and they don't know really why they're saying it but they know that it's true and it's so so interesting because i've listened to him talk about this a million times so i'm going to try my hand at explaining it real quick in a way that's not his way because his way is like yeah, you so got to be dialed in so he talks about life and it makes sense and we all think about life as like playing a game whether it's your job, you're trying to be like the most successful at your job or you're trying to be the best mom or you're trying to be great parents or you're trying to be the best in school or the best at a subject or whatever. And all that you can think of as a game. You're trying to win the game of whatever it, it is that you're yep. playing. Yeah. Playing. Yep. Quote unquote. And so when you're going through life, you're trying to win the most amount of games possible. So every person has, let's say, 10 things that they're trying to be the best in for themselves. So let's say job, family, with your kids, in a sport, with whatever topic you're interested in, yeah. outside of that, your hobbies. You're trying to be win yeah. those games and be yeah. the best you can be in those things. And even if people don't think they're trying to do that, they are. Yep. Yeah. So how do you win all of those in all of those areas? Like there's so many different games you're playing. How do you how do you win? And the way you win is by playing the game properly. And then over the time, over time doing that, you end up either winning or beca- getting close to winning a lot of the time. But more important than that is people want to play with you. Yeah. People want to include you in their game because yep. you play the right way. Yeah. So, for example, if you're somebody who is always lying, cheating, and stealing, you can get away with it for a bit. But at a certain point, people don't want to be around you anymore. Yep. People yep. don't invite you to play they don't want to hang out with you they don't want to talk to you they don't want you a part of their life yeah so you lose now yeah now you lost yeah or or you're in a business and you got to at all costs you win every deal like like it's never yeah you don't care about you don't care about fairness you just want i want i want i want at the end of the day you get and it's like there's a it's a zero-sum game right and then the other person doesn't want to do business with you and comes across as you know, yeah. like you, you might have more money or you might won the won that little battle, but you, you, at the end of the day, you, you lose a lot of other things. Exactly, maybe so friends, maybe integrity. Maybe you might win one game. Reputation, yeah. So if so, again, like we're saying, let's say you have ten things you're trying to win at. If yeah. you lie, cheat, steal, play unfair, you, it might win you one game, but you lose all the rest of the games. Yeah. 
And that's not the goal. Yeah. So you need to play the game properly, whatever the the game means to you. Yeah. So when you say that to somebody, it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. The reason you're saying that is because the goal in your life, whether it's sport, whether it's um, any other domain, job, hobbies, family, what relationships, you want to win as many of those games as possible. And the way you do that is by getting people to want to play with you, number yeah. one. So you get the most opportunities to play yeah. more. Yeah. And the way you do that is by playing the game, right? Playing fair with integrity and all those things. Yeah. And when you take something like hockey or something like a sport, it's a metaphor for that. So let's say in a season you're playing 30 games when you're in minor hockey in your season. It's about how you play the game because if you play the game properly, your likelihood of winning more games goes up. Yeah. That's why you say that. If you yeah. play the game properly, you might lose today. You might lose tomorrow. But over time, because you're playing the right way, yeah. you'll end up winning. And yeah. everyone understands that in yeah. sports. Yeah. If you play as a team, if you like do your systems correctly, if you play for each other, not for yourself, and all play those hard. kinds of things, play hard, follow the rules, mm -hmm. don't you know, not don't cheat, try to actually do the things properly, then <laughs> right. you're more likely to win right. the game. And then that so when Jordan Peterson talks about it, he maps that to life, it's the same thing. You can think of your life as a series of games. And if you the way you win the most amount of games possible is by playing the right way yep. and that's why you say that to your kids yep. so that was just that was what i w wanted to get to because yep. i was revisiting that again last night when i was reading and i was just like yep. man it's so smart and everything i just said when you listen to it you're like oh yeah like i know that yeah but having it articulated to you yeah that was what the the light bulb was for me when he, actually li listening to him say it to me yeah he's the master like, of that he's a master of you, we all he's so good at taking an idea and make it, putting it into words yeah. where every, everyone's sitting around going, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, if you went to explain it, you'd be like, uh, I don't know, it's like whatever. But he can sit there for half an hour and talk about yeah. it and why. And He says exactly what you know. Yeah. Like he says yeah. it and you're like, oh, yeah, I already in, knew in that. But now you're way. putting it to, putting words to it for uh -huh. me kind of thing. Yeah, so anyways, that was my long-winded intro there. But I th it's just right. so fast. I get so into it with that guy, man. Yeah, he, is, he is so smart. It's amazing so listening smart. to him talk. Yeah. So that's my, that's my starting piece for you today. Um, deep start. I, yeah, it's a deep one, all right. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about it. It's so funny. I was... Uh, I Okay, so what happened a couple weeks ago, I'm not going to name any names, but uh, there's... Uh, maybe it was about a month ago, three weeks ago, something like that, uh, watching a game, and um, there's a fight. After the fight, there was... A uh, guy went by the bench and did some taunting. Okay, I don't want to, I'm not going to say who, what, where, because whatever. So on the team that he was taunting, like he, he got, so this guy got the better of the fight, like he won, won the fight, um, was taunting the team and the tough guy on the team he was taunting was out. So he was saying some stuff and he knew, he, doing this, he knew it was coming next, next game, right? When the guy was back. So these guys played uh, a couple days, the last weekend, I think it was. And uh, they met that center ice, and they went at it, and one guy KO'd him. Looked like a KO. I think it was a KO. And then he kind of taunted, made a gesture and all these kind of things. And, you know, a lot of people wouldn't think much of that. It's like... Sorry, I want to just clarify it. Yeah. So they, so the guy a couple weeks ago was taunting the bench. Tough guy from that team came back Another and, game. Knocked out, and knocked out the guy that was taunting yeah. their bench. So from player before. A yeah. right. fought team B. He won the fight. He went by the bench and gave them, you know, told them how tough he is and stuff, yeah. which is fine. People do that. Player B, Team B, didn't have their toughest guy in. So as he was taunting, he knows what's coming yeah. next. He, he did it on what, purpose, yeah. obviously. He knows when that player's back, he's going to have to Yeah, answer. he knows. Yeah, he yeah. knows. It's not, not like he was surprised. Yeah. So they play last weekend and fight at center ice. And Player B KOs Player A. Yeah. So player B now does a taunting thing at center ice, you know, whatever. I don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah. And that's that. That's my story. Right. Okay, done. No. So my story. So really funny, really funny thing is it was two weeks ago. I was talking to Charlie, my kid, and I said, hey, dude, I said, I'm really proud of you for, uh, you know, when you score, when you have a hit and when you do things, you do it old school. Like you, you celebrate, like, you know, hands up, whatever. But there's not a lot of yapping, not a lot of talking, not a lot of gesturing because I told him, I said, and I, I hope that you do this forever. I said, if you get in a fight and you knock someone out, 
skate away like you've done it before. When you score a goal, skate away like you've done it. Like celebrate, but do it like you've done it before. Because when if you don't, you're just drawing. You're putting a target on your back, right? You're you're, you're and and for some people, that's maybe what they want to do. But I'd never seen it really turn out for the for the better. And uh, he goes, "Yeah, I know, Dad." So f- funny enough, it was it was. It's amazing how the timing works out. It was like a day later or two days later because I, I explained that the A fight to B fight. And I said, like, you, you don't want to do that stuff. You got a target on your back. And, and usually bad things happen. And, and, I, and, and, you know, going to center ice and dropping the mitts and having the big song and dance, it's not a hockey play. And I like, I like hockey fights a lot, but it's not a hockey play. And it's like I, I noticed that over a lot of time that it's not the best way to do things. Because it never, like, not never, but a lot of the times it turns out ugly. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So I was talking to Charlie. He goes, yeah, I know, I know, I know. So then, ironically enough, the next day, or the couple when days later. Happened, really, eh? Okay, yeah. So it happens, and the guy that was taunting gets KO'd at center ice. Was it worth it? Right? You go about your yeah. business quietly, and, yeah. you know, if it happens, it happens. And the big sh- show at center ice. So to add to that, player A, or player B now, that did the taunting on the KO, got suspended and it doesn't say what he's suspended for but i'm assuming that it says indefinitely but i'm assuming it's for the taunt probably so the my yeah. point is that when you do this stuff i don't think it ever comes back in a positive way right because you know what i mean if you go if you go under the radar and just do your job you, you things work out when yeah. you have to bring it on right and, and and i get the emotions and stuff like that like i get it 100 percent, i get it but mm-hmm. There's, and then the thing is, is that there's always someone else. Mm-hmm. There's always someone else. You're never, you're never the, just the toughest guy. Yeah. Or you're never just the best. You have to, you, you got to just quietly work at your craft. And to me, it's, it's one of those things where I'm like, I, I just saw karma coming back. And That's I don't it. even know what karma is. I don't, I, I don't believe in it necessarily, but it's a bitch. Well, there's, there's two parts of that for me that just come to mind quick. One is... If you're the guy that's always taunting, then not only is there a target on your back, but people want to see you get yours yeah. kind of thing, yeah. right? Which is, I don't, I don't really know, I don't even really know what my point is in bringing that up, but it's just a fact that you want to be a guy that people want to have around. And when yeah. you're the guy that's the showboat, taunting, whatever, some people might like it, but a lot for a lot of people, it rubs people the wrong way, man. Yeah. Even if, if I'm watching, if I'm watching a football game, yeah. Guy goes in and scores a touchdown yeah, and does perfect. his little song and dance at the yeah. end. I'm like, yeah. ah, just do a touchdown. Off. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, fig off, man. Like, that's I don't, I don't like it. Some guys, yeah. some people like it. Some people it gets them into the game when there's a big yeah. dog and yeah, pony show. But for some people, but I, to me, it's just as a player, not as a fan, is how we're talking about this. As a fan, like when there's the dog and pony show, sometimes it's you like watching that yeah. or whatever. But to me, as a player, you never want to be the guy that you know other people want to get you know yeah. to get fed a little bit you know yeah. and that's that's not that's not what you want to be it's not a good it's not a good setup for yourself because like you said then there's the target on your back i think of a guy that's coming to mind right now is like Sean Avery yeah. when he was doing all his stupid shit yeah. yeah everyone just wants to see this guy get yeah. mashed yeah. you know or the guy that's known for cheap shotting people yeah. or whatever like yeah. people just want to see you get whacked <laughs> yeah and guys on your team know it too you know? Well, the other thing is you got to remember that when you do this stuff like this, you could be putting your team at risk. Right. Like even, a, I'm not even saying fighting, say a goal and you go like, I had one of my guys that I trained score his first OHL goal last week and the celebration was like, I was like, oh dude, I want to call him, but I'm not going to. Yeah. I just say, stop it. Stop it. Yeah. You scored a goal, man. Like act like you've done it before. But anyways, even like, when you score a goal and you do the, like the extreme celly. Or you, or you, whatever, whatever dramatic way you do things, you're also putting your team at risk. So if you're you're taunting someone else, you might be the toughest guy in the league, but you got you got 17, 18 other guys that yeah. are on the bench that someone could take liberties with them. So it's like yeah, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to work yeah. out well for me. Well, it, it elevates the temperature. I'm old school too, but but I'm and I'm all for that. It but it elevates the temperature yeah. of the game. Yeah. When maybe it doesn't need to be, yeah, because that's when guys start to run around and guys start to get hurt. And you think, especially in in junior hockey, OHL, it's a bunch of teenagers. Like everyone is very hormonal yeah. and impulsive, yeah. and that's why you see like in. I remember one of the guys I used to play with. He played for London, I think, in the OHL. Right, and he gave a guy a two hand in the face, and 
to in like for me, I don't know what would have to happen to me to make me feel like doing that. <laughs> but these are things that that happen in the yep. game. Or it was like that the same guy we're talking about. He got suspended earlier in the season yep. for doing something, yep. st- taking a run at a guy or whatever. Yep. And it just happens. So you're elevating the temperature, maybe yep. unnecessarily. And if even if, like you said, if you can answer the call, maybe somebody else on your team can't. And when yep. there's guys running around. It just can get dangerous. Yeah. And another yeah. the other side I was going to bring up is uh, another guy I was thinking of. I'm all over the map. It's okay. But uh, it was uh, George St. Pierre as a fighter. Yeah. Yeah. He was one of those guys, just quiet, yeah. take care of his business. Yeah. Lead ups to the fight, wouldn't trash talk. Wouldn't buy into nothing. it. Nothing. So even when, even when he would be on the losing end or on the receiving end for a round or if he lost a fight or whatever, yeah. which I think only happened once. It only happened once or twice, yeah. But... Everyone wants to see that comeback now. Yeah. Everyone wants. Everyone's picking you up. Can't hate them. No, but but everybody's picking you up, yeah. right? So yeah. in the moment where you have, because everybody's gonna get theirs, man. Whether you're someone taunting or not, everyone's gonna get have a bad play, get get beat up, get hurt. Something's gonna happen, and you want to have a, the boys around you to pick you up yeah. when you get in that situation. Yeah. And if you're and if you're always acting like a dink, yeah. then you're not gonna have that that kind of support around you. So yep. you have to be be aware of that definitely when you're getting thinking about getting into that kind of situation. You're going to go by the bench or something like yep. I don't know. That's that, that's not that wouldn't be my style but yeah, no, I know. I, I that's how I feel about yeah. it. Yeah. But I was just telling Charlie like we, we when we talk, we talk about stuff like that. Yeah. Like, you know, try to make him a pretty good mentally and all yeah, that stuff why. and that's that's why. Yeah. You know. It's interesting how that happened right after you had the talk too though. Well, I could kind of okay. see it. Go. I know. I've been through this. Yeah. Times. You know what's going to happen, right? Yeah. But it's like it's unnecessary unless you're choosing to to create that. That's a different story. But um, anyways, that's that's that. Yeah. No, yeah, that's, that's good. That. I like that. That's I good. I don't like the taunting and stuff. It's just like just go about your business. And I, I know everyone's looking for media and and everyone wants attention and all that stuff. But I just find well, quiet and steady gets the job done, man. Well, maybe let me segue for you a little sure. bit too into your next. I think your next point. Might a lot be. of this. So I was talking before about the how you play the game thing. Yeah. That kind of plays into that a little bit, right? Yeah, Doing things very the right much way. so. Very much so. You want to do, th- do things the right way so that you have the chance and opportunity to win. And the more the more there's a target on your back, the more people are coming after you to take opportunities away yeah. from you, man. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. That's one part. Second part is, I think this will be a good segue. Okay. What does it take to be the kind of kid who will taunt or go by the bench? So for me, growing up, my dad was always drilling into my head exactly how you were saying with Charlie. You say, just act like you've done it before. Act like you've been there before. My dad, I can still, I remember him saying that to me vividly. Like, pretend this is something you do all the time, even if it's not. Yeah. And because you'll just be better off. And I always used to think that with guys that were the more showboat types, it's like, why are you allowed to get away with that? Because like, I know for me, if I did that, my dad would smack the shit out of me when I got home. If I was going on a knee by, by the other team's bench, Whatever you'd be like, what is yeah, wrong? Yeah, with yeah. You? What's yeah, wrong yeah. with you? Yeah. Like, why are you doing that? Yeah. So it kind of comes turns into a little bit of a parenting thing for me too. Um, but I don't think parents a lot of time understand what the implications of those types of behaviors are if they've never been there. Well, before, yeah, that, you know I, what I mean? agree with that hundred percent because you go to a minor hockey game, a youth hockey game. <laughs> I just well, well, so I went to one. Uh, Charlie's built was in town last weekend. Oh yeah, we didn't even talk about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, and they were playing in a tournament here, yeah. so we got to watch the young guy play and. Uh, they beat a team that uh, lost their first game, and the parents were losing it on the refs. Yeah. The, the 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 the, uh, re- the coaches were yelling at the refs, called them losers. And it's like I was watching the game. First of all, there's no hitting. It was a uh, nothing wrong with the game whatsoever. But people go absolutely nuts. Mm-hmm. And if that's your behavior as a as a minor hockey parent, your kids are gonna like what else, what do you expect? Yeah, it's a, all it is is a hockey game. So I, I was thinking about this as well um, in minor hockey. I, think, I don't know if that was trying to be your segue or whatever, but uh, in minor hockey, I was watching. Uh, let me put it this way. I was watching the evolution of my son and a couple of kids that are in the OHL now. And I've done this before, but my son is the closest thing to me, so that's what I'm going to use. And I've watched. He was a very good hockey player in youth hockey, obviously. Right? He was a high draft pick, obviously a good player. And when you get to the OHL, like this, it's a different test. But when you watch, I was just watching over the years how – the hockey will sort itself out. So my point of this is that, you know, the other morning I was watching. There's guys here at six thirty in the morning watching their little kids getting private lessons twice a week. Not private, like a very small group, twice a week. 
and they don't miss a beat and they sit and they watch everything and they they talk about it and they got to make sure they're thinking they're making all the right moves for their kids and stuff like that and it's all for naught and they worry about it you know what i mean like it's like anxiety and this is what they talk about and this is the most important thing in the world is that their kids get the right coaching and this that and all the other thing what if you're so what what's going to happen is either you're just going to be good enough or you're not now what what what, you, what should you do when you're a kid yeah you do, you take care of your skill like but the kids got to want to do it do the skill work and do that play hard all those kind of things and at the end of the day if you're good enough you're gonna get drafted or you're gonna get a scholarship or whatever but i've always said to people i was like because when they talk and they get all freaked out, I go, your kid is not going to know how to play hockey until he gets to that next level, OHL, college, where it's actually a business. Yep. And they don't understand that that's a business of hockey. So and so I've watched my son, and I think I was telling you this the other day, how he was, uh, like, not that his game has changed, but it's now it's a structured, thoughtful, yeah. he knows a role. He's a much, much, much better hockey player, obviously. But the system takes care of itself. You know what I mean? Yeah, you have no choice but to figure out how to play now. Right. Otherwise, you won't. They'll just kick you out of here. They'll just get rid of you. Well, right? that, so, that, but the system is so good. Yeah. You're playing with the with with the best. Like the minor, I always say that about people taking the minor hockey out of. So, for example, we were talking the other day. <laughs> yesterday, uh, you know, the parents were, uh, were 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 nuts about it. Talk about it. Like always worried about it. Trying to get them on the right line and all this stuff. And I saw what the what the player was. He was a, he was a a good hardworking player, but he didn't have a lot of creativity. He didn't have a lot of like uh, necessarily hockey sense, and and he but he worked hard. He was a great kid, and I I, I I I felt bad because I'm like I just want the kid to enjoy hockey, but I know that that car ride home, and I know that everything yeah. that goes with it is just going to be, you know, you got to be better, and it's, that's all they talk about. So, anyways, moved away, and this is what I'm talking about. The hockey takes care of itself. So now he's playing at a little bit higher level, not much, but a little bit higher. And there's the same thing has happened before. Works hard, no points. So the, the dad or the system, which I think the system at some point, the youth hockey coach and stuff was like trying to get him to understand the type of player he is, but the dad wouldn't have it. Yeah. And if he would have actually paid attention to what his strengths were instead of trying to be something that he's not and worried about points and worried about, oh, that guy got points and more ice and power play, he probably could be an effective player yep. at a higher level. Yep. But now he's got zero chance because it's it's so ingrained in him, almost like evolution, yeah. that that'll never change. And he's just going to be a frustrated kid that works hard. And 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 from the parents' point of view, it's going to be he got screwed. Oh yeah. But he didn't. But the yeah. system takes care of itself. Yep. So if you learn all the, the, not I'm not talking the details of hockey, but if you understand, like we've talked about a million times, that you don't have to score goals, but if you you know you you do the little things and try to learn the game. But work your skill, work your shot, work your skating and all that stuff, but do things right. If you get drafted, you're either going to be good enough or you're not. And then when you do, the system takes care of it. You become who you're supposed to become under a system. Yep. You know what I mean? Totally. Well, I think the two, we're kind of getting around the, the topic. I know we wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the maturity thing today. Yeah. And for me, the topic is for both the players and for the parents though like there's, there's a maturing process that both need to go through yeah so for example when we're talking about the taunting thing if you're gonna go if you're gonna be the type of kid that's gonna go around chirping all the time and showboating and whatever when the moment comes that you somebody cleans your clock for it or there's consequences for yeah. that behavior whether you get fined or beat up yeah. whatever it is yeah. that hopefully is a moment of maturity for you where you're like, okay, I should probably tone it down a little bit or whatever. But it doesn't have to take those moments. No. And that's kind of when we are sharing messages that we're sharing on the podcast. That's kind of what we're trying to help people to do is get that mature, those maturity or those maturing moments to happen sooner. Yeah. So whether you're a mom and dad or whether you're a player, you need to start the, the exactly what you just said, that whole spiel you just went on. You need to start thinking of it in those terms. So for this kid you're talking about, as mom and dad, if you can have the the foresight to say, okay, he's either going to make it or he's, he's not. we got to let things play out. But then you try to actually understand the kind of player that your kid is. And the lack of understanding of hockey from these parents yeah. in particular, yeah. it ends up hurting the kid. Just yeah. or, or the over-involvement, whatever you want yeah. to call it. Yeah. Because it could be a lack of understanding and it could be just being over-involved and trying yeah. to 
make all these moves for the kid and whatever. And, and when you don't really have an understanding, which I know these parents don't, then it just ends up being the kid that suffers, right? And how yeah. you're saying he's a hardworking kid. There's a lot of benefits that the kid has to his game that could be used in a role if he adopts his role and tries to be yep. exceptional at his role. Yeah. But, you know, they, because of the parents, they're trying to change him into something that he's not. And that ends up costing him down the line. Whether, when If he would have just kind of embraced himself a few years ago and really focused in on doing that part of his game and doing that well, that yep. could have been something that ended up getting him more points if yep. that's what your goal is. Yep. Or just getting him noticed in general, just as yep. somebody who could be valuable to a team because he does this thing really well. And I played with a kid that was exactly like that. He ended up getting drafted, but he could never figure out himself what kind yep. of player he was. Yeah. And... When I look at him now, like at the time, I couldn't analyze him either. I was his, his age. But when I think back at how he used to play now, it's like, yeah. man, he had he was big, he was fast, strong, and he could rip the puck. Reminds me a lot of Charlie, actually. Yeah. And it's like, he could have played like that. Mm -hmm. That's how he could have played that role. Play yeah. rough and tough, skate yeah. in straight lines, get your shots on net. Yeah. But what you're not is you're not a playmaker. You're not a quarterback. You're not the kind of guy that can carry the puck through everybody right. and score. You don't have that phenomenal hockey sense yeah. that some of these top 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 skill guys have you don't yeah. have that and that's and, okay and it's totally okay you can develop yourself in the other roles because there's a lot of other roles that are needed yeah you know but everybody wants to be mcdavid man like everybody wants to be the puck carrying as i'm as i'm watching more and more like this is the most i've watched outside of when i played and coached so i have a big gap of yeah. not being in the ohl but uh as i'm watching more and more i'm watching the um, the vanilla. There's a lot of vanilla, and 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 this. I think there's a lot of people that just don't understand that, and, and the pro coach is probably telling them, and maybe the message isn't clear, or maybe the message is just lost. But a lot of kids play, and they don't. They're not bringing anything other than, like you said, trying to be a skilled guy. You can't have all skilled guys, so that's why someone that has a uh, someone that's like maybe a big hitter. That goes out and hits and hits and hits and doesn't get a whole lot of points. He's so valuable. Yeah, he's so valuable. Or, or a guy that's just a defensive specialist. And you know, there's there's sometimes not a lot of glory in it. But it's like now you got something. Okay, I need you. But if I have everybody that's, you know, great stick handling and it's good. Like I'm not cutting that off. That's for sure. It's the greatest thing to watch. A beautiful skating skilled hockey player. But if that's all it is, it's it's like then then. If you play a team, you got two guys running around hammering guys and stuff. Then it changes the tone of the game. And if you don't have anything to offer back, yep. then you lose. Well, the you best know? the best example I have, I use this all the time. You never see or rarely do you see three like superstar skilled players on the same line. Right. For five on five play. Right, right, right. You might see it in if it's overtime or yeah. when there's extra space and they have more uh, yeah. time with the puck. Yeah. Then you might see that. But yeah. normally you have a guy that maybe makes plays, a guy that's a shooter and a guy that mucks it out in the corners. Yeah. That's a that's a common dynamic yeah. when you get to higher levels, at least. Yeah. When the when the kids are younger, sometimes they'll load up superstars all on the same line. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's the most effective yeah. because when you're playing five on five, only one guy has the puck. And if you have three guys that always want to have the puck all the time, yeah. then you're you're Exercise asking futility. Yeah, you're asking for conflict, you know? So if you could <laughs> yeah. be the guy, let's say like this kid we're talking about who's really hard working, skates in straight lines, can just get the puck off guys or whatever. That's super beneficial to the two guys on your team, maybe the shooter and the guy that yep. makes the plays because they need somebody to get in the corners and get the puck out. And guess what? You get the puck, pass it to playmaker guy, he makes a play and we score, and now yep. you have an assist. Yep. You know. And then, I mean, it always ends up coming down to points for people, but they don't have the proper context of like, you could play different roles to yep. get the same end and yep. goal if you want to be a guy that's getting yep. all kinds of Tom points. Tom Wilson's whatever. still a star. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. He gets... 20 goals a year, I think. Well, Cass, too. Cass, Cass is another good he's example a star, of that. Like, he's a star, so valuable. A, everyone knows who he is. Everyone knows you know? who Cass is. Very, yeah. very well-known name in hockey. Yeah. And it's not because he's Connor McDavid. That's right. It's because he's tough. It's because he's a guy that you know you need to be aware of when he's on the ice. Yeah. Big guy. Yeah. Plays physical. Yeah. But he also has some skill where he can make Oh, a play, he's got skill. Right? <laughs> so People would underestimate, I guarantee but this is the point, right? <laughs> he's so good. Very, very good. Yeah. But not what he's known for. No. And there's room for that. Yeah. And it's actually necessary 
on especially at the higher levels yeah. because you're not going to be not everybody can be the number one scorer you know yeah. and if i think at the younger levels too it's it's important to start as a coach as mom and dad is to start talking about things in terms of knowing your role as a player you know, yeah. like, what are you actually good at? That's like, why those you, three questions I always say is, yeah. what, do you, what, what are you good at? Yeah. What makes you have a good shift? Mm-hmm. If you've played 10 games, you got zero points, then you're probably not, it shouldn't be goal scoring. It should be playmaking. It's probably something else. And how can I make my game better? Yep. And if you, if you elevate the three things that you're actually good at, you might get a few points now. Yep. But you'll get noticed nonetheless. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And I think it's, it, it would be useful if, people listening, coaches, parents, you start to talk about things in that way. Like, what are you actually good at? Because, you know, I think back, just using Charlie as an example again, he doesn't play, I said this to you. When he was in Bantam. When he's in Bantam. Like, the comment I would make when we'd go watch is like, man, I'm expecting to see Connor McDavid when I'm thinking of like a kid that really stands out. Yeah. That's what I'm expecting to see. Yeah. But as I start to watch more closely, it's like, he makes a really good pass off the wall. He gets back to his D zone. He's always picking up a guy yeah. on his way back or whatever. Yeah. He finishes his hits. Yeah. He wins a lot of faceoffs, and you start to pick up on all these other yeah. elements of the game that are very important. Yeah. And that's how you start to become, I would think, because I'm not a scout, but somebody like a scout, because you're starting to pick out out oh, you're 100% things right. that gaps that you need in your team, and oh, this kid can do that. Yeah. This kid can do that. This kid can yeah. do that. It's not just I'm looking for Connor McDavid, because yeah. there's only one Connor McDavid, man. Yeah. You're not going to find a lot of those. You yeah. know. Yeah. But, yeah, he gets titled as a power forward. Yeah, with skill, that's a good title. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Not a lot yeah. of them around anymore. You no. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, so having said that, so we'll go into like the maturity of this, of, of both the parents and the players. And I want to start with the players, like because again, going into the OHL, like a lot of guys don't have their identity. They don't they can't figure out that some guys that that are playing, man, and it's like you can see line one, two, and three that it's your higher skill guys. So you got to know. But you, you should just know that there's something else that you got to bring to be effective, to gain some ice, to gain some uh, coach's trust. But I think about it, and it's like, well, before you're a pro, like, like assuming you want to be a pro, because that's what most kids that are, are aspiring to, before you want to be a pro, and especially when you get to OHL or college, you, sh- you need to act like a pro. And it doesn't mean, well, no, what it means is like in every aspect of your, of your day. And wow. I'm amazed. I love this point. No, man. but dude, yeah. I'm amazed that... We had a kid work out here that plays, <laughs> and he came in every day with the worst hair I've ever seen. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you talk to him, and his mouth was, right? And he's a very good hockey player. And he was doing interviews, NHL interviews, with his hair. Like, he looked like the, the, the drummer for the monkeys yeah. back in 1968. <laughs> <laughs> or the turtles, or whatever they're called. <laughs> and it's like, okay, so if you want to be a pro... You have to you have to present yourself as a pro. So it's like it starts with your your hair, how you dress, how you act, how you speak, how you uh, your body language, oh, yeah. not just on the ice. So I I sit there and I'm I'm amazed that I had a talk with Charlie a couple of weeks ago. He had to come back for a couple of days, and we had a talk. And I said, "Let's go get your haircut." And he goes, "Ah, ah, ah. I said, "Dude." What do you want to look like? Do you want to look like a pro or do you want to have people say you don't give a shit about yourself? It's important, man. It's important. So I'm amazed that, and I know like, hey, listen, we got a lot of the kids in here. The new thing is having like the, the, the hair. Yeah, that's, the like, you just yeah. look terrible. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay. That's, that's the thing. But when I was a kid, it was, I liked heavy metal. So having like long hair was the cool thing. But guess what? I couldn't walk around looking like the singer for Metallica. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to be a hockey player because, in my opinion, if any time that you, that you walk the streets and, you know, like we talk about this a million times, that they're always getting judged. Yep. Your coach could be looking at you and your, his hair, your hair could be just bugging him. You can't really say you need to get a haircut or else I'm not playing. That's not the way it works, but yep. it could rub them the wrong way. But scouts, you know, you go, old Canada, and you got the kid with his bad hair. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. It's like, okay, maybe, it was, why does that kid not want to act like a pro? And you, or you see them in... Not dressed appropriately. And I, God, I don't dress. I'm not talking about your dressing for a funeral. I'm talking about just like looking decent. I mean, truck suits yeah, are fine and but, stuff. But you, do, but okay, even for you, you dress appropriately. Yeah. You dress appropriately. When you're around the gym, you wear your gym clothes. Yeah. If you have to go, if you're going to watch a hockey game, you yeah. dress appropriately. You have a nice pair of pants on, yeah. you look clean, yeah. hair's done, you're shaved, yeah. you're not looking like a scrub when right. you're going out. Like, yeah. and one Commanding of the, respect a little that's bit. Exactly. And because it's how you carry yourself. One of the best compliments I've ever. I've ever gotten actually, and I, this didn't actually dawn on me until just now when you're talking about this. Right. 
I was going for my interview with Tesla. Yeah. So I went to. That's a small company, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm obviously I'm very nervous about it. Went and talked to some of the people at school just to be prepare myself for the interview, which they weren't very helpful, but whatever. And one of the best compliments I got from one of these guys that I sat with to talk, he goes, he said, told me like, just be yourself. And that's good because yeah. that means the way that I'm presenting myself is, is good. It's appropriate. And one of the other, his follow-ups is just, you're, you're a clean gut. You're a clean cut guy. <laughs> you're well-spoken. Just be yourself yeah. and have a conversation. That yeah. was one of the things that he said to me. Yeah. And that, that clean cut part is important because people, we t I talk about this a bunch too, like you shouldn't care what people think. And it's like, okay, you should though, yeah. because these are people that are giving you opportunities. And somebody who's well put together, yeah. the default thought about that person is, okay, this kid is put together. This yeah. is a kid that I don't have to worry about as much. Or if you come in with your hair down to here, looks like you just got out of bed, your shirt's not tucked in, you didn't iron it, it's all wrinkled. Like people notice these things. Yeah, and then it's the old saying, right? How you do uh, anything is how you do everything. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so I, I just want to go back to that though because it's like, well, okay, like uh, some people could say, well, it, it probably doesn't matter, it might not matter. And and maybe some of the kids listening are going to say, you know what, that makes a lot of sense. That when someone's looking at me, if, I don't, if, if I'm trying to get to drafted to the OHL and if I'm walking around and I look like uh, uh, Justin Bieber or something, I don't know, is that a good one? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Look great. If you look at you know, if you look like you're not a <laughs> hockey player, uh, or that you don't care about being in hockey, then then you're creating doubt. So you're just creating doubt. Why do it, right? Yeah. So why not have a good haircut? Like, what does Connor McDavid look like? What does Sidney Crosby look like? What does Tom Wilson look like? Well, like, and go down the list. Now there are guys that like to have the hair and the beards, and but they've already made it, man. Yeah. But having said that, you think if you think it's not really a, a thing, why is Lou Lamorello? What if he's scouting you? His every team he's had, there's you're not allowed to have beards, mustaches, or long hair. It has to be at a certain level. You have to wear suits. It's all this professionalism. What if he really likes you as a hockey player, but that's the one thing that turns him off? There goes an opportunity. You yep. don't know when the scouts are walking by. You know, like it's it, and and for me as a parent, so I when I sit at uh, when I watch Charlie's games, I, I sit in a certain section, and behind me, I I, I met someone i met a scout like we were sh shooting the shit one day and all that stuff and my point is not to say i talked to a scout my point is he knows who i am he knows who my son is and if i'm sitting there with two beers in my hand hat sideways or or <laughs> hat sideways like come on man <laughs> like what am i trying to portray here but but if i'm acting like a jackass or complaining about maybe charlie's ice time or saying you know he should be playing a, uh, more than this guy or Yelling at the ref or, or, or treating my wife like shit in front of people or not being polite to other people. That, I'm not saying it would do anything to hurt my son's chances, yeah. but I'm very, very aware of that. It's a reflection of my son. It's a reflection of the team. And I don't ever want to be the guy that is a poor reflection. Yeah. So it's called professionalism. Yeah. Right? I have a lot of things now. Okay. That was good. So just don't worry about being cool. If people are watching. Don't yep. give them a reason to have a negative thought. So... If you don't like what I'm saying and you got hair like the, the like I said, the drummer for the for the turtles, just ask yourself, is this like look in the mirror, right? Look in the mirror and self analyze myself. If I was a scout for the St. Louis Blues and I saw me right now, would I be impressed? Yep. If the answer is, well, who cares? It's just hair, you got the wrong answer. Yep. Right? If your if your body language says is 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 is, is projecting that I just don't care or I'm just so cool, it's a negative. So change that. Yep, and that goes on the ice. That goes social media. Like that's why I'm, I, I I like a lot of the the kids with their social media. They just don't put anything on there. Yep, they don't have to be cool, because that you know why. Yeah, <laughs> you know why. Okay, so, go ahead. You're on a yeah thing. So first thing, okay. I wanted to I want to backtrack a little bit. So you're talking about keep putting yourself together, dressing well, your haircut, all this kind of shit. Other element of that that I want to talk about too is your mouth, man. Yep. Because a big, big issue that I find with kids, just even training in here, is not being aware of who's around you. Yeah. So there's, it happens quite a bit in here where I'll have a group working out that are 13, 14, 15, whatever. And there's kids doing other programs that right. we run inside. Right. And there's an F-bomb. the other end yeah, of the building. Yeah, the parents are right here. There's an F-bomb. There's somebody screams something. Yeah. Guys are like being gross, like burping out loud, like this kind of stuff. And... It's one thing 
again, I'm not saying you can never be a jackass or anything. There's a time and a place to do it. If you're with your six buddies working out in private, it's just you guys and you want to mess around a little bit more, that's fine. Yeah. But you have to know when to turn it off. And if you, if there are people around you, especially if there's adults and there's kids around you, like you don't know who's listening to you. And yep. it's just, it's just good practice. Like you need to be on, man. You have to act like you're a professional so that when people look at you, they think that you're a professional and that's because that's the demeanor you want to have. You want to act like you're a professional. And if you're throwing F-bombs in front of parents and screaming and being loud and obnoxious and but people know, and you don't know who it is that's watch, yep. watching. We've said this before. So that's the, the first thing is on top of all the appearance stuff. It's yep. what is coming out of your mouth. Like know when to shut your pie hole, you know? So that's one part. Second thing I want to touch on is just parenting, how to parent that. Like, how do you parent your kid to get a haircut? So, so if you're going to school and everyone has the flow, like we have, I have the one group in here, yeah. they all have the same hair. Yep. They literally all have the same haircut. Right. And so when you're, all your friends have this haircut, you're going to want to have that haircut. Yep. But you have to ask yourself what you just said. It's not about being cool in grade 10 at high school. You know, that's, that's right. not what it's about. And if you're going to be a little less cool because you don't have the same haircut as everybody, that's actually good. That's actually a good thing because you're elevating yourself to a different level, right? People, yep. people see that you're, you're self clean cut, man. Self-aware. So, so when you're a parent and you're trying to relay this message, which for sure could be a battle. I don't know. I'm not a dad. Maybe you have a better perspective on it than I answer. do. But you're not saying it like, hey, you need to get a haircut with no, with no reason. Like you're saying it the way we're just saying it, but people are judging you. You need to, we want to look clean. You know, you want to look like you got it together. It always goes back to this, what I always say, dream, popsicles. Yeah. Right? Dream. Keep the dream big. As a parent, that's what I love about hockey. Keep kids between the lines. Kid wants to get drafted to the OHL or whatever the goal is. It's like, I said this before, can I go to the dance, dad? Yeah, let's think about it. Well, what do you got tomorrow? You got a game? Okay. So what time do you think you're going to the dance at? Well, it's, it starts at nine or 10. I said, you should probably think of you going to bed at that time if you want to perform tomorrow, right? So you got a big game, team needs you. Yeah, yeah that's true. Who's going to the dance? Is it any of your buddies or uh, guys that don't want to play hockey? You know what, son? You, know, you might want to think about that. You're going with people, there's bad things that happen. You know, we went through this before. Not bad things that happen. It's just not conducive to being having a good game tomorrow. Think about it. Let me know what you think. Oh, yeah, that's true. Maybe I'll just stay in. Okay, so key in, in on the tone. The yeah, key in on the tone yeah. of how you delivered the message, yeah. right? You're not saying, well, you need to go get a haircut because your hair looks stupid. It's like, that's yeah. not how you're t teaching your if kid. If I was a scout, son, do you th like, I'm not, I, and I, that's how I say it to him. I say, I'm not preaching to you. you. You choose what you want. But if I was scouting the uh, Guelph Storm and uh, general manager coach saw you and they really liked you as a hockey player and he saw you with, you know, bad hair and whatever, I said, does that help or hurt? You want to look professional, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, I'll get a haircut. Ho having a hockey player for a kid is, I'm not going to say it's the easiest, yeah. but it really helped me It gives you good teaching points, right? You don't, have to, you don't have to do any magical explaining. It's just you use it as an example. Hockey, this is what you said you wanted. To do that, you need this, this, and this. Is this aligned with that or not? Well, it's the same, but it's the same as when we coach in here, right? That's why I always ask that question, like we said in the last podcast. Like, so what do you want out of hockey? Oh, I want to play in the NHL. Okay, well, if you're six, yeah, yeah, yeah. What else do you want? Like, you know, have a, a short term or a, some kind of a dream that they're actually motivated by. They'll do anything for you now yeah. because they told you your dream. If you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you work on people's dreams and goals, then they're going to be a lot more likely to work for you. So that's why I can get so many hockey players to perform so well, at least when I'm around. And maybe it's, some of it sticks when I'm not. But, yeah. you know, how many kids have we had got, gotten to read books? What it's kid, lot, what 14 year old kid thinks it's cool to read a book? And, Not many. And tell me about and it. Tell us about it. Yeah. Like, why do they do that? Because we, they hear us speaking about it and we explain that mental, the mental toughness is going to be more important. And here's why. And, oh, you're going to learn about the George St. Pierre book. You're going to learn about a fight. I know you don't, you're not a fighter, but hockey, fighting is hockey. Hockey is fighting. It's the game within the game. It's the battle. And, and, and it's, 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 it's facing fears and stuff. And it's, you should really read this one. Really good book, kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, how many kids have read that book? <laughs> it's hilarious. I know. But so, that's only because they had a dream and we were able to tap into their dream. Exactly. And I, I just want people, again, to really key in on the tone of how you're, you're having the conversation and letting the kid come up with the solution. Because especially having a teenager, you would know, again, more better than me. You go to fight, it's going to be a fight with your teenager. If you go in 
just have to just be the talking. coolest dad in the world. Yeah. You know, and so if, if you're if you're going in and trying to dictate, like that's a recipe to have your teenager wage war yeah. against you. Yeah. And you don't have to do that. Yeah. You can just use it as the vehicle. Like, what do you want, man? Yeah. If you, does that in line with what you're doing? Just like you said. Yeah. The other thing I was going to bring up, you were talking about parent behavior. If you're sitting up in the stands, how people are, are watching what you're doing. And we had a kid or we have a kid that's getting looked at by some people right now that's young. And you were telling me that one of the guys, you know, went to watch him on the weekend yep. and was looking at the dad and was saying, man, like the dad doesn't really seem to be like a good example for the kid, not in terms of his behavior, yep. but just in terms of how he, his appearance, yep. like how he looked, you yep. know? And so even as parents, they watch, man, they watch. And yeah, that's a really good point because I wouldn't have even thought of that story. But yeah, he called me to say, this is... Uh, like, like, not not negative, but questions. Yeah, and questions. They're, they're looking, and you know, it's so. I I mentioned this last week or two weeks ago or whatever. People think about scouts like they don't have a brain, <laughs> you know, like they think about scouts like they're not watching. Like when we we went to Sarnia and you were talking to the one, one scout, and you walked back over to us after, and you're just like, man, they got the book on Charlie, that's for sure. Yeah, and a couple other kids, a couple other talking. kids too, but they're two they, different scouts. NHL and they're, they're telling they're telling you things where you're like, holy shit! Like yeah. you've been watching, eh? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And you, you only know, had four games at that point. That's right. Five so, games. And they're seeing it. They're seeing the parents. They're and they're. That's why when they're in interview questions, like, ask how tall are your parents? Like they're looking, they're checking these things. So whether you're a player or your mom and dad, you have to be aware of how you're conducting yourself. If you're a crazy mom in the stands, that's always yelling. If I can hear you yelling in the stands yeah. all the time, yeah. That's that's just a red flag. Like yeah. I don't want to have to deal with you yeah. later. And 100%. there's too many good players where I probably don't have to deal with you. Yeah. I can probably just pick the next kid who yeah. doesn't have a crazy mom yeah. that I'd have to deal with. That's you know? right. So th- those are those are two really good points, especially that parenting piece. It's not just about the player either. You know, like there has to be maturity in how you're conducting yourself as a parent and as a player. Because when you're at the rink, especially as you get into those years where you're being scouted now. These people are everywhere, man. They're everywhere, everywhere and they're watching you. Everywhere. Everywhere and they're watching you. Whether oh, yeah. you're mom and dad or whether you're the guy on the ice. You're still out in public and you have to conduct yourself a certain way to make sure you're not getting yeah. demerit points for your kid yeah. by default. That's a you good, know? good way so, to put it. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, just on that, the maturity part, part on uh, uh, hockey players, it's like, so this is another thing when I see a kid playing and, and they got like bad hair, bad body language, whatever, like whatever. I'm just throwing a few things out there. But then it comes down to, because now like when you get like, when you get to this level, like, like I said, it sorts itself out, but then you, you can control a lot of this stuff. And it's like the maturity is like, yeah, the, all the stuff going into getting drafted and getting there, it's a lot of work and all this kind of stuff. But once, once you have a sniff, then are, what are you doing to actually become a pro? Like, are, are we becoming a pro? Like, do you want to be a pro? Are you doing things to become a pro? Or you're just happy to be there, or you're pretending. And my my son tells me what he does on a on a daily basis, which I hope he's not shitting me. He could be a little bit to say, "Dad, yeah, I'm doing everything I can," but that's on him. Yep. It has nothing to do with me. But like, you have you have the ability once you get there. It's not my youth hockey anymore. You have the ability. There's resources, and if you're if you if you have time before practice or after practice. To spend time working, like, first of all, are you working hard? Are you actually working hard? Are you, like, if there's extra ice, which there is, are you actually using it in a beneficial way or are you just out there just to, because you don't want to be the last guy off or the first guy off, right? And you know what I mean. I totally know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> there's pretenders, right? Are you are you staying? Are you working? Like, do you have a weakness? Do, could your skating use a little bit of work? Is Are you using the power skating coach when the coach isn't telling you to? Are you are you finding a guy on your team that will stay after practice and maybe bag himself? Will you will you jump in with him and even though you don't necessarily want to help your conditioning? Maybe other guys do it with you. Are you are have you not handled a puck a lot in the last month? Well, maybe you should do some stuff that you're handling the puck, right? Like whatever you know what I mean. It's find something that you're, that you're doing and you're doing it with a person with a purpose. And I know that that's that's on the ice. Are you going to the workouts and do you actually ask questions? Do you actually are you honest with yourself? Are you actually working hard? Do you understand the benefits of it? Like, like it's a, it's important. This is professional now, because mm-hmm. if you're not if you're not a pro now, you won't be a pro later. Like mentally, right? And if if you're like staying up late, are you staying up late because it's just no? My mom and dad aren't around to tell me. My billets, my billets, 
kind of care, but they don't, they're not going to, they don't understand. Yep. So I can stay up and play video games or on my phone, Instagram, but I don't know what the kids use anymore. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't. It's all these funny words. Yeah. Um, you're sleeping right or you're eating right. Like it's important. And I, I love it. Like, so, like, like Charlie will tell me, he told you too. Like, oh yeah, he, like he's, he's changed so much. Like, and you had a lot of, uh, me being a dad was one thing, but you and Dalton and Zach and, you know, the few guys really dialed him in on, on nutrition. And it was interesting to watch that evolution when he decided, when he got drafted or was getting drafted that he really wanted to be a health, health nut almost. And I was, I just laughed at some of the, you know, a 15 year old kid or making sure he orders a power bowl instead of a hamburger. That's a great choice, but yeah. it's, it's not everything, but it's something, right? Yeah, so, it's it's, so the point is, is that do you actually, are you actually doing the work? Yeah. Are you actually doing it? Because it goes by quick and you can pretend your way through this thing. But if you actually want to do it, the maturity, it's, it's really hard. And I'm going to go into a little bit more in a second. Do you yeah. have anything to add to that? Yeah. So I think it's, it's important too, that the kids understand it's, and for people listening, like it could, you could take the message, like we're saying, you have to be perfect and do everything nope. right. And that's not what we're saying, but even the last example you gave with the nutrition piece, it's just that you're making an effort because making an effort to improve actually leads to you improving over time. So say that again, making an effort to improve yep. will actually lead you to improve yep. over time. So if you're trying, like I have guys coming in here now that are Charlie's age and they're constantly telling me about their nutrition choices. Yep. And sometimes they'll, they'll tell me what they ate. And in my head, I'm like, well, you could have, this is this yeah. other thing that I'm thinking would have been way better yeah. for you to have. Yeah. But the thing that they did was a big improvement on what they would have normally done. A thousand percent. And that's a bit, that's a win. That's a huge win because at the end of the day, you're 15, 16, 17, yeah. and you don't have enough knowledge yet to make perfect decisions. That's right. And no one ever has knowledge to make perfect decisions, but especially when you're young, but you're, you're making an effort or they'll say, Hey, I, I asked my dad if he could get this from the grocery store because I saw you were eating it the one day. It's like, that's cool. Yeah. Good for you. That's yeah. good. Or, uh, you know, and, it, and it's like that with anything. Guys talking about the time that they're going to bed, the guys talking about the book that they're reading, the, and all these things are indicating yeah. that you're trying, you're trying your best to actually move yourself forward. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it might not work. It might still not be enough, but you're giving yourself the best chance Absolutely. by doing that. And you'll, you'll be and able that'll, to... That'll transform into something else. Yeah, and you'll, and you'll be able to, whenever hockey is over, yeah. you'll be able to say, well, I did everything that I could do. Yeah. With you won't the, be worse off for it. Yeah, with the, with the information, and that's the way that I think about it. Like, yeah. I, I didn't end up making it. I wanted to go farther in hockey, and I didn't. Yeah. And I look back and say, I made the best choices I could make with the information I had at the time. So I can look back and say, I, I tried the best I could. Like, I, I actually yeah. tried my very best, and I know when I compared myself to other guys, and even comparing to guys that made it further than me, I felt like my efforts and what I was doing, I was doing more than they were to actually try to be successful yeah. and it just didn't work for me. That's like that's, right. that's what happens. And that's sometimes that's just life. Sometimes it just yeah. doesn't work, yeah. but I don't have to look back and be like, man, if I would have just tried this or if I would have been a little more dialed in on that, or if yeah. I would have stayed after practice or if I would have asked my coach or whatever. And, you know, talking about the maturity piece, I say this all the time too. I don't know if it's expecting too much of kids. Cause I'm, again, I'm starting to forget what it was like to be playing junior and what my mentality was like truly without yeah. mistake like remembering wrong what yeah, I, I i get it you know what i mean i get it but guys like it's so it's so huge if you can be a kid that's gonna stay after practice and actually try to work on something instead of pretend to work on something just because you don't want to be the first guy to get off the ice yeah like these are the things that that can add up in your favor you do 10 things 10 small things like go to bed at the right time eat the right thing work on something in particular or have a purpose at practice every time you're there, you do 10 things like that, that compounds, man. It actually adds up. It actually will improve you over time it's yeah. instead of just, you know, kind of hoping, going through the motions and just hoping you get dealt the right cards yeah. to, to make it. Well, it's really interesting because when I played and coached, I know, like, you, you know, what it's like, right? You know what it's like. Mm -hmm. But getting away from it after, like, from being actually in the league, you you kind of forget how, not not me so much, but you can kind of forget. But for a parent, so I've got a story to back this up. So parents, when you say you want your kid, you want your kid to play 
you know, you see talent, you want them to get drafted and move away, or you want them to get there. I've said this so many times. Be really careful what you wish for, yeah. okay? Because you have no clue what that actually means. So, for example, that's why, you know, I think I think some of the people around me, when I when they see me with Charlie and they say, you know, they say, hey, we got this going on, and I say, hey, Charlie, might want to rethink that or, uh, right? Like, give him a little bit of, like, a nudge. Then he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. And then some of Christine's friends was like, okay, well, come on, man. Like, you guys are obsessed with it. He's like, no, you have to be. You yeah, have no, to be. No and choice, here's man. why. Yeah. So my daughter had a baby. That's not why. <laughs> <laughs> but So Charlie turned 16 two days ago, December 6th. And... His sister, my daughter, had a baby girl one month ago, the night that they played in Windsor here. Charlie didn't get to see his niece. Do you ever think about that, Mom and Dad? Do you know what I mean? Yep. Do you ever think about that? Your 16 or 15-year-old boy, 17, whatever. I don't give a shit what it is. When you choose this life, you don't have a normal family life. So that was on his mind. He's an uncle at 15. All the guys on a lot of guys on the team go, well, you're an uncle at 15? That's pretty cool. They're kids, man. Yeah. He goes, yeah, that's pretty cool. And he was excited. And he didn't get to see his niece. And it's like one of the most exciting times of his life. But he has to play hockey. And he was totally fine with that. It was all good. But he was, it was killing him. It's like, I want to see my niece. This is like someone I want to take care of, man. This is someone I'm going to love. My sister's had a baby, right? A baby girl. And she's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> so... He's been grinding it out and, and you know, d- doing really well. And Avery never really understood. She's playing in the OHL. Like Avery's my daughter. Playing in the OHL, that's pretty cool. And they get to see him on TV a little bit. But she never really got the gist of it. So two days ago on his birthday, they, my wife and Avery and the baby drove up on, on the Tuesday or mo- whatever, Monday. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> and they drove up. <laughs> they drove up. <laughs> after practice and they went and took him out for dinner to see the baby and the kid was like just so pumped that he got to s- spend a couple hours with his his niece hugging her and kissing her and just feeding her and just loving it and then she's got to go but the other perspective was my wife being so awesome just saying well let's let's make him a, a give him a great birthday and we'll go we'll go out of our way like to go see the kid you gotta drive three hours with the baby in the car to go see the kid so he gets a chance to see his family, right? Yep. So that's that. But Avery called me on the way home, and she goes, I didn't – he's got a whole different life there. He goes, like, the billet house, I didn't realize, like, he's got this awesome house, and they're really nice, but it's like it's a whole different world. Yeah. And, like, he's in this whole thing where he's, like, hockey, 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 and I went and saw the rink, and it's, it's amazing, and all the stuff they do. And she – it was like – this is what it is. Yeah. And she was blown away. Yeah. And then she was also blown away by, like, it's not just you're going to play a little hockey. It's a business now. It's like like the whole thing is like, oh, it was like a smack in the head for her. She was like, oh, this is what it is. And and for people that move away, for parents, when they want their kids to move away, that was like one little thing. Yeah. It's a different world. Yes. And your kid, and I, I've got a couple of things here. Okay? Yep. And then I'll let you go and I'll be done. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> Number one, it could be brutal from the eyes of the parent. And I, I'm saying this firsthand. I was really thinking about it. Your kid's gone. Your kid's gone. Like if you had a kid, like if, like think about this. If you had a kid, you, you're serious with your girlfriend. I know that. And like if you had a kid, like you don't have a kid to say, okay, 15, 16, oh, he's out. That's not what I wanted to do. Yeah. But it's the, the path that he chose, yeah. right? Little kid still. Yeah. Still a little kid. Yeah. yeah. So you're probably going to miss them. Most yeah. likely. You're going to miss them a lot. And ironically, he's going to, they're most likely going to miss you, like, depending on the situation. So I was like, okay, my kid's dream, and this is the thing that he wanted to do. And I knew real early in this, in this move that he was happier than, you can't be any happier. You know what I mean? You couldn't be any happier. You're happier than a two-pecker billy goat. Like, just happy. And but I know he's going to miss mom and dad a little bit. And the, and, and, the, and the negative times where things that he's trying to navigate through, you, feel, you just feel for him. But you have to be tough enough to get him through it and not make home 
the place where it's safe yeah. or, or where it's comfortable. And then there's times where he doesn't miss you at all. No, I'm good. And it's really weird because, you know, I, I think I said this before, like my son and I spent a ton of time together working out on the ice, hanging out, talking, laughing to he's gone now. And I'm just saying this for parents, right? And actually the kids too. Think about your parents once in a while. It's like they're sitting there at home and you had this relationship and all of a sudden they don't get to speak to you. Yeah. Or you get five minutes here or a phone call. And, and, but he might not miss you because everything's going well. Yep. It's really weird. Yeah, you, you want them to need you a little bit. A little bit. Like, call yeah. me. Hey, this is how my yeah. day went. But it doesn't happen. And yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah. Right? Because it could be, like, he could be calling you every day saying, I just want to come home. I just want to come home. And then they, they make it worse. But anyways, that's that's one of the things. Um, you want to hear of, <laughs> you, you ever hear the people, it's, it's in movies and stuff too, right? Call your mom. <laughs> call your mom. Hey, can you just call your mom once in a while, man? Like, I never actually, that never really struck me until a couple days ago. I'm like, can you just call your dad? Yeah. <laughs> just call me. Just give me a call, yeah. man. How hard is it? Just call me. Just, but no, it's like when I moved away from home, I'm not calling my mom. Why? What, who, hi. Yeah. What, what do you want to talk about? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's like, because my wife gets hurt a little bit. Like, he doesn't. Oh, know, yeah, for sure. Five minutes here and there. You know, we got a couple other kids that it's like with their parents are like, Whatever, yeah, I'm fine. What? And that, they're fine. And that's a good thing. Yeah. But they're not going to call home every day if things are, especially if they're well, if they're going well, right? As a parent, just a natural thing is you're going to watch a game as a parent, not as a hockey, even me. I'll watch it and I watch him. He's my son. He's doing great. But do you think I don't sit there and go, well, he could play more than this guy? He can get more ice than this guy. It'll drive you nuts. Yeah. But, you know, I don't lose my mind over it. I enjoy it, but you're, you're going to... You're, you're aware of the dad and you... You think he deserves yeah. more. You're going to think that, and then you're going to feel for them. Yeah. You're going to want to talk them through. So I'm really careful on how much I speak to him about hockey. I really am. I, I, I just let him do most of the talking about it. Um, so, you know what I said with players? You got to manage your disappointments, right? You didn't get your ice. Uh, someone got called up, whatever, all these things. Coach wasn't in love with you today. You got to manage it. Well, you got to manage your disappointments as a parent when they go away. You got to man- manage the disappointments that they didn't call you today. They need fifty bucks. That's all it seems like they ever call about. Uh, that, that you manage the kids' disappointments that he's not playing. Uh, there's so many disappointments that you look at. I thought he'd miss me more. All these things. Yeah. Uh, did I do the right thing and all that? Like, there's all these different things that come up. Um, and then you have to be there for your kid when they move away, but you can't be there too much. And that's something I recognize with myself because Charlie and I, as I said before, is we, we, we would talk for hours and hours a day. We're just together all the time. And a lot of the times I, he would, we would work through solutions or problems and, you know, it was just a natural thing. And then it goes away and it's like, I could, I could sense early on that, no, dad, I, I don't need it. And I, I wasn't not being pushy or too much, but I, I just read it and I said, okay, he's in, George's hands been coaching for 30 some years. George has seen everything a thousand times. He's produced a lot of players. He's a good, good person. I got to just let it, let it be. And when Charlie asked me a question or I sense it, like that's what I said, let me know what you want to talk about if you want advice or whatever. So we've done that, but it's, it's, it's hard sometimes because I, he called me the other day after his first game back cause he was out with an injury for missed six games. How'd he play? I said, you played fantastic, man. Yeah, he goes, was there anything? And I um, like, I was really reluctant. I said, yeah, there was one thing. And, and and I'm sure you know. He goes, yeah, yeah. And then he explained the play. I said, other than that, you played a fantastic game. But it's like, I could have been the dad saying, yeah, and you should have got more ice in that play there. You don't ever do that again. Da, 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 and go into detail. But George has got it. And yeah. it's just hard. You got to just go watch and let it be. And you can't be too motivating because they, they're getting coached all day, every day. Right? Yep. And he's with a, the best professional. Um, might be disappointed as a parent because in, my, in youth hockey, you could always sneak in and, you know, you see parents always have a text or a phone call or bump into the coach and just, you know, how's he doing or ask questions. When you get to this level, there's nothing. <laughs> you can't call the coach. Nope. And the coach isn't giving maybe even your kid feedback. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's not about that anymore. It's not about telling your kid how great he is or making him feel good or making the parent, hey, hey, I just, that power play that he missed, just letting you know or 
You know, I'm not giving you anything. You don't need to know. And it's yeah. it's it's a thing. It's and if you thing. and if you I would try love to. a call. I would love a call. Dude, I'd love a call. If George called me or the assistant coach called and said, Hey, doing well here, not doing well here, or just anything. I would love it. I know it's not gonna happen, but it would be like, okay, that's good to know. Not gonna happen. Yeah. But so as uh, you can imagine if you didn't get prepared for this, how hard this would be. Well, and if you tried it and if you try to intervene with the coach. Yeah. That's actually a negative. Yeah. So that's, well, that's actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't that's actually, <laughs> that's not just yeah. a neutral thing that's you're right. trying. That's actually minus points for your kid now yeah. because mom and dad keep calling or your agent keeps calling or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. And then, and then they grow up, they grow up, they grow up. My son, that's what I was saying about it earlier, the, how the hockey evolves you. you. Moved away from home. All of a sudden now, mom and dad, Jesus, we're pretty, be home at this time. Like we got rules and all this stuff. Now they're away from us. So they have a different set of rules, right? They got team rules. That's what, that's what they abide by. They still have our principles and our morals, but they don't necessarily have to follow our rules now. And they're on their own. They hang out with their buddies. They're at the rink. The billets are awesome most of the time, but they have their own thing that they're doing. And uh, when they come back, what do you, I, I'm, I'm really curious about this summer. Hey, Charlie, you're going to be in at nine, eh? He look at me like, huh? Yeah. I haven't been in nine. Uh, like, probably. We're yeah. going to have to talk. Yep. You know what I mean? And, and, exactly. And, Whatever it's like, it's different, and there's a good chance that from here on you'll never come back. Like I mean, in the summers and stuff, but it's a good chance that he's gone, man. Yep, my bud. Yeah. So when you think your kid's moving away, it's all good. That's all great. There's a lot of pressures that you have to deal with as a parent, not only as a player. Yep. You have to be mature about it. Go ahead. You good? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that was good. I like that. Are you sure? Yeah, it was fun. Okay. So, once <laughs> just to kind of wrap the, that piece up a little bit, so. I got one story when I moved away where I realized this is now from a player perspective where I kind of realized what it was like on my family yeah. that I was gone. So I came, I would talk to my mom probably the most frequently, but the rest of my family, maybe once a week, like my siblings and my, my dad, maybe once a week or whatever, my mom a little bit more. But I remember I came home for Thanksgiving, the one, the one year and I surprised them. I came home like I was surprised. I drove down. I had a car when I was up there. So I drove down. My la- It was my last year that I was away. And uh, I showed up at my cousin's house where we were having Thanksgiving. And when I got there, all of them started crying. Yeah. So like my You're sibling, my siblings were crying. I don't, I don't know if my dad, my dad and my brother did, but they were happy I was there. But all my, my sisters both did. My mom cried. And then the rest of my extended family was like watching this happen. And I remember being in the moment, just yeah. like, whoa, like, yeah. this is... No, it's all good. This is weird. Yeah, you're, like, you're sitting there going, no, this is good. Yeah, so I was like, I, that was when I started to realize, like, man, like, this is actually, this is actually tough. And yeah. my, my point, and, and I, had a, I didn't have a great time when I was away. Like, you're talking about how Charlie was having a great time. When I, I was away, it. I had a shit time when I was away. Yeah. Loves his team, man. But, yeah, but as mom and dad, I feel like, I don't, how you were saying, you know, if you think your kid's going to move away, it's going to be all good and whatever. I honestly think that parents don't even think about it. I think parents get so focused yep. on their the kid yep. and what the kid is doing yep. that they don't really think about yep. what it means for them. Yep. So my advice, and I'm sure my parents would say something similar, and you're saying the same thing, is start to think about it in advance. You know, what does this actually mean for you as mom and dad? Like, how are you going to handle this? And for you guys, you're super fortunate that he's as close as he is. He could have. He could, could have got drafted Ottawa. to Ottawa, could've North Bay, somewhere way, way further. Sault Ste. Marie. He could yep. have been far. Yeah. So you're very fortunate that he's very close fortunate. enough where you get to see him. He's just he's a highway drive away, no yep. problem. Yeah. But for people that are entertaining the idea, it's like, okay, what if they got drafted? What if he got drafted to North Bay? What if he goes to school in the state somewhere far away? Like, what what does that actually mean? What yeah. are we actually going to do? And That's so right. it's important That's to consider. Right. Those types of, how are you going to parent? Like, what's your role going to be? How are you going to talk to them? What are you going to do if they don't want to talk to you, which is going to happen? How about this for Thanksgiving? So speaking of Thanksgiving, so they were allowed, everyone was allowed within, re, well, everyone was allowed to go home. Not if you, if you come from Russia, no. It was only a day. You're allowed to go for a day, a night at home, right? So uh, a lot of the kids were able to go home. So Charlie came home. We picked him up and we brought him back for Thanksgiving. We're really nice. And you know what was the funny thing? My wife, and I was thinking it too. I'm like, okay, now that you've been gone, 
when you're home, it's weird. Yeah. Because yeah. now you're sitting here now, and now you're like you're you left you left shit on the counter, you left stuff on the counter. Yeah. Like, you're the old kids back, but you, it's been for the yeah. last three four months. Yeah. Now you're you messing might up have our to pick flow. Your shit yeah, up. you're messing up our routine now. Yeah. And it's like okay, like it's it's it it'll mess you up, man. It'll mess you yeah. up. It's crazy. Yeah. But anyways, the thing is that people underestimate. Um, the parents will underestimate how. Uh, what was my, what's the word I'm looking for? Challenging. It's challenging. That's a, that's a word. It's a very. It's going to be. It's it's in ways that you probably never thought of. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so you, do you think, think your kid's going to call you? He's not going to call you. Yeah. So do you think parents are uh, like I was saying? Because I honestly think that parents don't think about it. I think they get so caught up just thinking about the situation for their kid. Yeah. I feel like they don't think a lot about well, for themselves, like what it means, especially if you're not coming from a hockey family, like some, you don't have yeah. somebody who's done it before. Yeah. You don't really know what it means. Like we were, we met with the one family a little while ago and you could tell with the questions that mom was yeah. asking, yeah. they have no idea what's coming. Like they have no yeah. idea if the kid moves away, whatever. Yeah. And good, good for her. Like honestly tr- yeah. asking questions and trying yeah. to be like, what does this mean? Like what, what is yeah. going to happen and all this yeah. kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. So what do you think about that? Do you think that they don't prepare? Well, well do they don't understand. Like, I think like Christine in the, in the summertime when he was drafted, once she started thinking that my son's moving away, she would have some emotional moments yeah. because she's, her son's going to be gone who she loves so much. Right. He yeah. just brings joy to our house. So they think of it that way, but they don't think of the stuff that I actually told my wife was going to happen. I said, he's, you're going to sit there and you're going to lose your shit because he didn't get the ice that you thought or why this and all the things that I kind of went over, yep. that stuff is going to happen. And that's where it gets real, real, like really real. Yeah. And, and, and it's very challenging because you can, you can get upset, but you got to understand the process. And if you don't, so I think most people get, um, yeah, just the thought that they're moving away, but they don't understand what's actually the challenges. Well, and, and here's something, and this is something for the players I'm going to end on this. Okay. Yep. You have, not only are you playing hockey, like in youth hockey, if you have a bad game, there's only 15 players on your team. If you have a bad week, there's only 15 players. There's no one that's going to take your spot. Maybe on a, on a major midget team or something like that, there's a, a, an extra floater or something like that, or your ice time could get reduced. But at the end of the day, if you're not performing, it's no one's losing an actual job. No one, it's not affecting anyone's life in a, in a real way. You know what I mean? Yep. But when you get to this level, it's pressure to perform. So you're sprinting as hard as you can because uh, you like most OHL teams at this point of the year are carrying 14 to 15 forwards. Well, only 12 can play. And most have 7, 8, 9 D still. And some have three goalies. So if you don't perform, what does that mean? There's no nice guy stuff. Yeah. And even you might be performing, and it's like, uh, yeah, but this guy hasn't played. So the analogy is you're sprinting as hard as you can where you cannot breathe, and you have nothing left, and that's just to stay exactly where you are. Mm -hmm. So no one takes that spot. You're not moving up, and you're just hopefully not moving back. And it's every day. Do you think that's the same as minor hockey? It's a whole different world, man. That's a whole different ball game. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say was uh, you could be doing well. Then you hear the rumors of someone getting traded. And then, you, you know, there's rumors all the time. Most of them are a bunch of shit. But you now you hear someone that, oh, this guy is looking at getting rid of someone and bringing someone in. We, they need this and this. And it's like, well, that might affect me. You might even be on the first line. But that might affect me. And now it's like, oh, there's another pressure. It's like, wow. Like, I hope I can keep my spot. And that's the way it is. So yesterday, Charlie's uh, teammate got traded. And Charlie let me know after. And he said, Dad, like, he goes, this is the part that sucks. And I go, dude, it sucks. So he's seen someone early in, in uh, the season that was on the team before got let go. And he wasn't close to him yet or anything. But he was like, oh, man, poor, like, and my wife was Tough, like, yeah. oh, you're not just here. So that's another thing with the parents. My wife, I've told her a million times. So the one one or two guys got let go. They just couldn't make the team this year. And she goes, 
you're not just on the team. I go, no, you're not just on the team. You better perform or else you're not here. Oh, and it's like there's a pressure for parents. But anyways, one of his buddies got traded and he's he was tight with them, tight. And he was like, so what they have is he's, he was Charlie's vet. So his veteran. So the guys have a, a rookie that they are supposed yeah. to be the boss of, right? Like more or less. So anyways, Charlie, like he goes, dad, I love that guy. He goes, this is the part that sucks. And I go, I know, Charlie. I said, this is, this is the business side. It's, it's, it's the make no mistake. Like you're going to lose friends. And he goes, I hope, he goes, I, is there a chance that I never talked to him again, dad? I go, that's up to you. But I said, probably not. If you're, if you're tight, you're going to have relationships. I said, look how me and Paulie and me and Tom's and my guys, I said, since 16 years old, we talk at least once a month and we laugh. I said, it won't be the same because you were hung out so much. And he was a line mate of his. And it was like, he was, he was not devastated, but I would say that he was like, and not hurt. That's a little, little shell shocked. Yeah. But like the reality of his yeah. good buddy that he thought he would spend four years with or three years with is now gone and he's going to have to compete against them. And uh, that relationship will never be the exact same. Yep. And that's just the reality. So it's happening all the time. Yeah, It's a different world, right? When you could be the one getting traded. Like me, yeah. I got traded. Yeah. And I remember yeah. I have, I still, I think I might still have it. When I was getting traded, one of my buddies, same kind of dynamic. Yeah. I still remember his voicemail. He called me. He called me on my cell phone, and he was just like, "Dude, like, are you serious?" Yeah. I still remember. Yeah. Like, I was thinking about yeah, yeah. it. I still. I just got the chill thinking about it. Yeah. You know, because it's yeah. like that. That dynamic is yeah. is taken apart now. Yeah. It's, everything's different now. Yeah. You well, know? this is your like. I I know this sounds really easy to say, but I, and again, people would not understand it. But this, when you hang out like your team, it's like what they do in the Navy SEALs. Like you're with each other so much and you actually battle for each other and care about each other. It's like, yeah. you are like brothers. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of the times you are brothers. Yeah. And, and, uh, so when they said goodbye yesterday, it was like emotional for them. Yep. Charlie said, I don't know if he said that he teared up. I'm sure he did. Yeah. And I, I think his bud teared up as well. And it was like a big hug. And it's like, it's yep. just so emotional. It's like, wow, we did so many things together. And now we're, now you're gone. Well, yeah, the, the only analogy I can think of for people outside of being athletes would be like, let's say you're, you change schools yeah. when you're at, you know, whatever you move from one yeah, grade school friend. to the other and your best friend. Now yeah. you're not at the same school anymore, you know, something like that, you know? And yeah. these are all like the, the stressors that yeah. as a player and then as a mom and dad, you have to deal with that too. Like your kids getting either if you're the kid getting traded, you're getting uprooted from your situation and moved somewhere else and you have to try to, how the hell are you dealing with that when you have no idea what's coming in the new situation? Yeah. And then if you're the kids that are staying and somebody's leaving, well, now you got to deal with your kid being upset that his, his buddy's gone well, or whatever, just, right? As you say that, I'm thinking like last night I had a choice, like how do I deal with this? Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't, hey, listen, it wasn't, it wasn't a crisis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a crisis, but my son had emotions and he told me and he was be, trying to be tough about it. Yeah. He goes, yeah, you know, whatever, let's hockey. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I said, it's your friend. Yeah. I said, so it's okay to, uh, it's okay to miss a buddy. I said, but you do have to move on. And, and so like a lot of parents could just say, oh, it's a business. So shut up and move on. Like there's ways that, that can yeah. be very, uh, it's sensitive very, it's very to navigate. Delicate, man. Like yeah, you have it's to, very delicate. You have because to like at the end of the day, I know my son thinks he's 29 now and, and the guys on his team, you know, I know that they think they're a lot older and a lot. Uh, more experience in life than they actually are. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they're 16 to 21 year old kids. Oh. And they're, the 21 year old is a kid still. Yep. You know, you do stupid things, you make shit decisions, you make good decisions, you, you're, you're more emotional. Um, you don't understand life the way you think you do. Um, and that's why your support system has to be no, it has to be. It doesn't have to be, but it, it's nice if you have a good support system that understands. But I tell you, man, both sides of the fence is uh, it's a challenge. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to give my kid away. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I, 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 you know, I was like, oh man. When I, trying to we're stay, buds. <laughs> yeah, when trying to stay level as, you know, it's it's funny because we just talking about the maturity thing. It's all the rules that you are rules. All of the, you know guidelines or whatever advice that you're giving to the players yeah. it applies to the parents too like one i was yeah. just thinking while you're talking it's like okay so as a player you have to make sure you stay pretty level like don't get too high yeah. don't get too low you got to yeah. deal with the punches and try to keep yourself neutral yeah, so for that sure. you're staying level through all your decisions and whatever and yeah, being intelligent sure. about what you're doing you have to do the same thing as mom and dad it's like you're saying watching from watching from the stands your kid's not getting the ice time you want are you going to start screaming from the stands or are you going to tell them about it after is that a yeah. good idea to yeah. say, well, you should be getting more ice time. 
yeah. like, well, maybe, maybe not. Do you not actually know whether or not that's true? Or are you just talking? Because now you're saying something that maybe isn't helpful. Yeah. You know, so you have to do the same thing as a parent. You have to be mature as the parent too. That's yeah. uh, that's a really good point too. Do you have yeah. uh, anything else? No, I think I'm done. Got to so I, I I like this, the topic, the maturity topic a lot. I know we didn't touch on everything necessarily, no, but we much. we, we did. Yeah, we did a lot a lot about players. But the unique thing about this one is talking about it from the perspective of the parents. So I hope the parents take some of that and and really you know try to digest it moving forward as their kids yeah. start to go up, because it's important, man. You don't want to be the you don't want to be the red flag parent. And you, to other people, and you also don't want to be a pain in the ass to your kid yeah. trying to go through whatever they're going through, right? So it's, yeah, it's maturity for the players, and it's maturity for the parents. Yeah. So that's good. We'll uh, we'll leave her there. Okay. Pick her up next one. Goodbye. Goodbye.